Everybody, this is Justin Case of American Newscape. Joining our friend and media personality Linda Summers back for another installment of American Men. Awesome, American Awesome. All right, hello, Linda. Welcome back to American Newscape. Well, uh, thanks, Justin. It's great to be back. There you go. I, I, I'm uh, tongue tying myself with all these Americans. But that being said, here we are striving for perfection. So, Linda, what's happening with striving for perfection? Ah, perfect. Uh, so it's great that you asked that because striving for perfect is actually where a lot of people um, in everyday life, it doesn't matter what it is, um, it's in your business, in your own personal life. I know for myself personally, I was a perfectionist and I had to have everything perfect from the dishwasher being loaded to the toilet paper towel roll my hair, everything had to be in place. And um, it's debilitating, actually. And I just, when you strive so much for perfection, you actually make things worse. So I thought this would be a great topic for people to really kind of be aware of how are they striving for perfection? Yes, do we want things to look good or be, you know, um, and I don't want to use the word perfect, but like, do we want things to, I guess, look good is the word, but perfection is just such a a word that actually is, I, only the word I can think of is debilitating. Well, I, we strive so much for that, and then for what? Well, I, to, I totally agree with you, Linda. It's, if any, even the consummate, person striving for perfection has to understand it can never be obtained because we can always be better every time we learn something we're a better person than we were the day before yeah and you know go ahead go ahead no go ahead You're well and, and I, I think it comes with maturity i mean it as we as we learn to appreciate where we are and what we are that can become our own type of perfection i mean be the best that Best you that you can be, if that makes sense. Yes, totally. I, I totally agree with that. I, I will say, I think what happens is, and I know for me personally, again, and this is, uh, you know, um, it comes from childhood. Everything that we do today comes from our childhood. And so I've seen people, and like I said, including myself, but I've seen people where because of their childhood or how things were, like I had to have it because my dad was a perfectionist. So I felt that I had to be perfect in everything that I did. And like you said, when you start to mature and you start to dive into yourself and you start to get to know yourself and you realize why your childhood was the way it was and you have the understanding because everything is about perspective, then you can shift your own consciousness to pick your own battles okay. and I've had to do this in my life picking my own battles and realizing is it that is it really that important like to be so perfect that like why is it important who am I trying to impress am I trying to impress myself am I trying to impress other people um, is it because I'm still feeling like this inner child that you know, didn't get things right, and my mom said, you know, whatever. My mom said that, now this is not what she ever said, but I'm just saying it could be, you know, you're a messy person, you know, and that person was like, well, I'm never going to be messy in my entire life, where somebody else could say, okay, well, I'm just going to be a messy person. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Well, it's, uh, we talk about the influence of our parents. I, you know, as I grew up, my parents never gave me money for grades in school. Grades in school was my job. Mm -hmm. And I went to academically acclaimed schools where I was never going to be the best student, which I quickly understood. 
but I could always be better and I could always be happy with the successes and how I evolved in those situations. And maybe that carried on into life for me. Right. You, know, you probably had a different, you had a different perspective on that, right? So not everybody does. And it really just depends how your childhood was because everything that we do today is really based upon our childhood. Unless we do the work along the way of our journey and doing the inside work and seeing why we react to things versus respond, things that are triggered, this perfection thing, striving for such perfection um, when it could actually explode in your face. Well, and I'm not saying that it happens all the time. I mean, there are people that, you know, have been very successful. But what did they do along the way? Was it striving for such perfection that they had to get everything just right? And if it wasn't right, then they were just going to toss it. And and others suffered be, because of it. It's just, uh, you know, I would encourage every parent out there to, to believe they have the perfect children. Uh, if you have a pet dog that you love, I would like you to believe that it is the perfect dog for you. Mm-hmm. And then life gets a lot easier. Uh, you, you, you can look at all the positive impacts or influences on you and try and knit a blanket or a shroud for yourself that, that can comfort you into a more perfect understanding of who and where you are. If that, it's, it's certainly wordy. It may not make any sense, but it made sense as I said it. (laughs) Yeah, it did. And I think that's a really good point is for parents to really be, um in awareness of their children and how they are being with them and what they're requiring of them because you know a kid is a kid they don't have a handbook to to know how to be a kid we don't have a handbook to how to be a parent either and so we want allow the children to have their mistakes if you will they're not really mistakes they're just um uh, little bumps in the road that they're learning, they're navigating their way through their life, through, through life, right? And giving right. them guided direction. But when we, um, you know, you have to get straight A's, you know, you can't do anything other than, well, that's great, but maybe they're not school material, you know what I mean? They're, maybe they're excess, they um, are really good in one course versus another course. You know, one person may be good in math and the other one is not good in science. The other one may be good in science and not math. So you, if, I guess what really boils down to, you really have to know your child. Right, right, right. And are they meeting, um, are they reasonably meeting what they should be? Uh, are they meeting, you know, maybe your expectations are out of line. And those same expectations that are out of line for your child may be the same negative impacts you're putting on yourself. I can't, uh, society, particularly where you are in Southern California, there was so much pressure on young ladies to be perfect. And that just wasn't fair. It wasn't fair for society, anything to put that on those women. And through my eyes, it was kind of a beach boy world. They were all perfect. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's nice yeah uh that's true. And, and just like our friends i mean we see our friends whenever we you know when you look at your close circle of friends you find a perfection in them maybe how they impact or influence you or for whatever reason and then outside influences will come in and wonder why well it doesn't matter why to those outside influences and divest yourself of those people mm-hmm yeah, because the outside world, you know, society will tell you one thing and, you know, do we, you know, where did society, who drummed up, you know, whatever it is, um, who decided? Somebody had to make a decision and we just followed along without even thinking, well, does that even serve me? Is that in my best interest? Does that make me feel good? You know, and so I think these are all the things that we can start to look at, you um, whether it's striving for perfection or whether it's just anything in life, you know, and what's happening in the world or anything like that, right? It's to take a look and, you know, what are our perspectives on that? And, you know, I want to go back to what you had said too about, you know, Southern California and, you know, um, 
uh, women striving to be perfect, right? So again, where did that come from? Is it coming from, you know, they didn't feel good about themselves as a child and as growing up and they were, you know, not pretty or whatever the, the case may be, right? And then, you know, we have all these different modalities that, you know, that can um, enhance and makes us feel com more confident if we weren't confident. But the thing is, yes, everything's in moderation. So if we are getting to extremes, and we've seen this in you know Hollywood and some people where they've gone to extremes where that trying to be so perfect, they ended up messing it up. Right. Well, absolutely. You know, face facelift gone bad. I mean, there's so many things that can happen. Um, yeah including you know we see extreme extreme uh, results from these aspirations to where people actually take their own lives because they don't feel worthy worthy of what worthy of what you know living the living the dream living you know enjoying life uh learning from life moving through life uh it's it, it's almost at times painful to talk about it. and when we see people our tendency is to laugh at people that are aspiring to perfection or believing that their their fecal matter doesn't stink. Uh, but I don't know that that's fair either. We should almost reach out to them and you know be as compassionate as possible. Yeah, definitely. And I think when we do, when you see people like that, and I've done this, you know, in my own life, when I see this perfection. It's almost like you know that that person is really dying inside. And this is just a mask that they've put on because they are hurting inside. And so, again, I think it's really, like we said, it's, um, it's really great to have that compassion for people like that, or just really compassion in general, you know what I mean? For whoever, a homeless person or, you know, uh, anybody is to have compassion well i you know it's just like the people that will sit and laugh at a dog chasing its tail it's basically the same theory the dog should be able to catch his tail and per perfection should never be obtainable and even if you think you've obtained it it's all about perspective and other people's perception and my perception of you chasers is you're all perfect in your own way so what are you what's this all about yeah yeah and i'm not saying i think you know to get things right i guess that's a better word is to get things right i think is good i mean what does right mean you know what does it look like to you so i'm not saying to everybody you know don't be perfect but when we are so perfect in a way that is debilitating and that it actually um bounces back at us right? right that it explodes that's what i'm really referring to is when it just becomes so uh, debilitating is the only word that i can use that i can feel like and think of that can really uh, hurt a person well so my 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 point in doing this topic is was really to bring awareness to people of when they are striving and especially with their children to have them be perfect you know perfect little beings like you know little kids that are just perfect well kids are not they're just <laughs> they're kids you know what i mean and they're exploratory you know they're always exploring which is great and we want them to explore we want them to feel you know but we also have to have them have boundaries too so it's just really a matter of really being in awareness like where is this asking yourself where is this coming from was this growing up that my father my mother whomever society says that i have to be a certain way you know you should just be you that's it just be you but you don't know who you are until you start diving into who are you well that's a good point i mean uh uh it's a very good point you know being able to realistically look at yourself you know that my thing i always love to say that face in the mirror as you're as you're approaching that your own face in the mirror uh be kind to yourself and be introspective and 
and try and understand why you're here and what you're trying to do and do it do it as the best you can and i don't think any of us can ask any more of each other yes exactly and I, that's really good words is the best you can you know what i mean and i think that in itself and whatever your best is that's your best and it may not be somebody else's best but it doesn't matter because you're not somebody else you're you right right well it's yeah. like you know you are the best linda summers in my life and you couldn't be a better linda summers if you tried Oh, well, I and, wouldn't be better. I wouldn't be anything other than me. So that's sure. Well, that's the way it works. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the way it works. You know, you are a blessing and you put energy into everything that you do. And that's remarkable. And sometimes we don't see that. You know, sometimes we don't see what others see in us. And, and maybe there's an importance to that. You know, there's nothing wrong with reaching out to a friend or a family member or a child. And telling them what you really appreciate about them and why they're important to you. Yes, I agree, especially children. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. And yeah. like I said, our friends too. It's important. Our partners, whether it's business, whether it's a partner, your friends, your siblings. I think it is really important to let them know um, what you see in them. Because it's hard to see ourselves, but once again, once we start doing the work within, then we start. We can, but we can begin by asking others, "What do you see in me?" Well, you know, and we, and you know, now that I'm getting longer in the tooth, I've I've grown to respect having lost touch with friends for long periods of time, twenty, twenty five years, and having them exclaim to me remind me of things that I did for them or how they remembered me is always amazing and most times I don't even barely remember what they're talking about but I do appreciate the fact that I touched them back then and uh, we all do that I mean you do that uh, it's you know the added you know one of the principles I try and live by is leave people better than you find them and one thing I've always said about you, Linda, is you leave people better than you find them. And for for some that don't understand that, it's just after Linda and I interact, I will have learned things. I will have gained more appreciation for her, and she will have left me better. Oh, thank you. Well, how cool is that? Yeah, it is. It's really cool because then, you know, like when you – do leave a conversation when you feel really good and you're not drained that's a, a good conversation and it's a good um, person to be with no, absolutely you're not being drained yeah right absolutely so, mm -hmm. so despite linda spending a large chunk of her life in southern california running around on the beaches surrounded by perfect people she still <laughs> finds time to be here with us and we are we we sincerely appreciate that Oh, thank you, Justin. It's a pleasure always being on here. So thank you. So so give us some tools. I mean, we all, you know, even I'm guilty of it from time to time. Um, and give us some tools moving forward that we can help temper that, uh, what, let's just say, waste of energy. Well, one, I, I would ask myself, and this is what I did when I was moving through and navigating my way through my life of my perfection, being a perfectionist, and realized that it was draining. So feel, get a sense of how you feel when you're doing all of this. Um, that's one. Feeling is really important, and is to recognize how am I feeling like with all of this? Am I, you know, um, stressed out? because I'm trying to get things so perfect. Um, that's one way of feeling is so important. And then also um, look at it, why am I doing this? Is this for somebody else or is this for me? Is this coming from a childhood? Is it coming from society? Where is this coming from? Is it something that I put on myself? And then also to ask yourself, you know, uh, and I probably said this in the very first one, is how important is it? 
Is it gonna? Is it going to make or break my life? Like when you, you know, when you said when you started off the show, right? It's like you know what? Life happens. Yeah. And this you know what? When it is like that, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so cool because it's not to where people are like, really? Like they don't have a life? Like are you kidding me? Like it, it just can't be that great. You know what I mean? And when I think that's why they had all those reality shows. So really just looking at why are you striving for this? Is it for somebody else or for yourself? And I think when you start to realize and you start to pick your own battles, that's another thing too, especially with your kids, right? Anyone right. yourself, it doesn't matter if your kids, yourself, whoever it is, is um, picking your own battle. Like, is it that crazy, you know what I mean, that you're going to have to have them be little robots and not be themselves? Well, so that's what I would say. That's a great beginning. And I would suggest, you know, if, if, <clears throat> if you are out there and you, you're feeling that uh, you are entitled and you feel a sense of perfection about yourself, pick up golf as a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> In order to golf balls from Justin. <laughs> yeah, in order to golf balls from Justin. It's yeah. just, and, and the other thing, and, and I, I really hadn't stopped to think about it because I always thought this was self-imposed, but it's not. It's not. If you're in a relationship and your partner is wanting you to aspire to be perfect in their eyes, wow, that's frightening. Right. That is frightening. Then you have to change who you are to be someone who they want you to be. Right. Well, yeah, that's and a lot so, of work. That wouldn't that be a lot of work? I mean, wouldn't that? And wouldn't you start to assess? Yeah. Wow, <laughs> this. <Yes>. Wow. <laughs> I yeah. never, I never even thought about that. But that, that is frightening. Yeah. I, now I, now I'm frightened. <laughs> right, but when you know yourself, and again, too, I would ask if if someone's asking me to be a certain way, it's like, well, you're with me, so why would you not? you know, like this package, right? Because this is what attracted you. So there's a lot of things. And so what does perfection look like for you? That would right. be a great conversation to have somebody. What does perfection look like for you? It's a great conversation to have with yourself. What does perfection look like with you, for you? What? But if you have changed to be with somebody, then that's probably the person you want to be with. Well, yeah, it's just like, it, you know, in this point in time, if you asked me to be a ballet dancer, you would be sorely disappointed. <laughs> and I it, and I wouldn't feel bad. I would just be concerned about your expectations. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, to be a ballet, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a serious topic, but, but uh, uh, you know, as... But in, it, in the same time, at the same time, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but at the no. same time, we have to be light about it too, right? Yes. Because it, it is life, and, and we have to look at it in this bigger perspective of life. And that's where perfection is so stressful that you're not even enjoying life because you're trying to be so perfect at whatever it is. Well, you know, I. matter. Motherhood, anything. I could see a, a large group of people stopping by this video because they would sense that it was perfect and it would be the environment that they would want to be in but uh, uh, in reality you know stop by stop by this coffee table chat with us and and feel good about yourself and feel good about the company that you're keeping yeah yeah absolutely yeah, wow wow living living up to someone else's expectations how frightening is that you know i was an athlete yeah. in a lot of sports and i was very good in a lot of sports but there was there was a wall there was a ceiling to all of them and when i was a competitive shooter and let's just say i was maybe the top 100 in the country when i looked at the top three or four it was amazing you know, it, it was amazing. It, it was something that no matter how much money and time and dedication I had, I could never attain their talent level because of their their eyesight and their their gifts from God. Did I feel bad about it? No. Do I think I was the best shooter I could be? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And some people are. I mean, some people are really great dentists. Some people are really great uh, real estate agents. Some people are really great at sales, right? Some people are really great at tra great at trap or whatever it is, right? There, that's where they. When you know yourself and you know what you love and what you're good at and things like that, 
then you're going to strive, which is different than really striving for the perfection. You're going to strive to do the best that you can do and, and reach the potential that you have. But just because, like you said, that you didn't reach that potential that somebody else did doesn't mean that you didn't give it your all, that you didn't think you were great at it. Right. And when Not we going to be number one, you know, we all are really. No, but when we all sat around the bar after these big shoots, I knew I had a better time than they did. <laughs> exactly. Which was important. Yes, because you weren't stressing out because you didn't make it. That's like when people were like, oh my gosh, they lost. And I'm like, but they made it this far. <laughs> exactly. I mean, hello. Like, nobody else made it this far, but they did. So, you know, to me, it's like that, it's all, it's, it's perspective. That's all I can well, say. It's really perspective. Well, and it's like, you know, and I, I don't want to mean, mean to be bashing one of the sexes, but, uh, you know, there's, there's one sex that in particular will sit down and watch it and an NBA basketball game, NFL football game, a prize fight, and they will stand there and tell those ah, those remarkable athletes that probably sold their souls to the devil to be as good as they are, how they should do it. Or they would sit there and explain to me what they would do in that if they had that chance. Exactly. <laughs> and, it, and if you could listen to them without laughing, you're a better person than I am. <laughs> That is so true. Yelling at the TV, standing up like they're really hearing you. They're gonna do what you're gonna say. You know exactly. It's, but all right, Linda. Hey, we cherish this time. We really thank you for being here. Just leave us with a final thought, and we'll we'll wrap this one up. Don't stress yourself out. Just be you. Seek who you are. Find out who you are. You're an amazing being. You just don't know it. We see you. We know who you are. And we know you're amazing. But you need to know that. So just strive to be you. That's what I would say. Strive to be you, whatever that you is. I, I agree with you, Linda. And everybody, let's just celebrate being on this side of the grass. And yeah. that being said, this has been Justin Case and Linda Summers bringing you American Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Remember, additional information and links are provided in this video. Is read more. Today's the day to subscribe to this channel. Please learn more about Linda Summers when time permits.